What's up everyone? In this issue of Platinum Tech, we finally get to test and analyze the legendary, the unicorn, the most expensive and best block ever made by Nissan, the Nismo GT500 Triple R block. Let's go. Now, a lot of people on our channel had been asking us to test one of these blocks, but don't worry, we have been wanting to test one more than anyone, because we're big GTR fans. Now, we knew a couple of people in Australia had brand new ones, and, well, we just couldn't get our hands on those. But it turns out one of my close friends actually had one hidden away in a shed and said, take it, I don't care what the results are. So, we have a brand new GT500 block that's been wrapped up in plastic, with all the wax and sealants on it, and it's actually never been taken out of that box properly until now. So it is a virgin block, so we can really test just how good it is. Now, like any good GTR fan, we've Googled the GT500 block, and we've read in magazines all these different things about it. Everything from, you know, bigger bores to thicker deck to different materials, harder, stronger, lighter. Someone said it's heavier. Someone else has said different nickel content. We've heard about different reinforcement, different ribbing. We're basically going to go through everything one at a time that we've either heard or everything that we can see and either debunk or prove what is actually done to the GT500 block. And then Herman from Platinum Racing Products is going to do his tests so we can find out whether this thing is a myth or the real deal. On first physical inspection, the GT block appears to be no different to the N1 block. Looking closer at the water galleries, the area where the bore meets the deck does seem to expand out smoother to meet the deck and have a little bit more material compared to the right angle join between the bore and the deck in the regular RB blocks. We were told the distance between the water gallery and head stud holes were higher, giving more meat on the N1 and GT block, but after measuring all of the RB blocks, we can say the distance is not consistent on any of the blocks tested and there's no real difference. We were also told there was more material and support around the crankshaft, but nothing we measured or have seen validates the claim. If anything, the area around the crank at each end of the block is thinner on the GT block. GT block, really excited to test this block out. Been waiting for ages, trying to get one, borrow one, steal one, whatever. Haven't been able to get my hands on one, but finally now we have one, thanks to Hawkins and his connections. I brought down an RB25 block because it's the most comparative as far as I'm concerned. It's the four-wheel drive, it's the cheapest block versus the most expensive block that Nissan makes. So you would expect this to cream our poor little old cheap 25 slapper, which is gonna be our next engine for the yellow car. And this is the first and only GT500 triple R block that I've ever come across ever tested. I've already done a little bit of testing here. I've got a fair idea of what's going on, but obviously we're gonna do some live testing with you now and run you through everything that we do with all the other blocks and uh, give you a fairly good idea of how we would rate this block and whether it's worth the kind of money that it is worth. Okay, we're gonna jump straight into deck thickness here. The RB25, usually around seven mil. So, um, We'll just suss this one out straight away before we get into the other. 6.7, 6.5, 6 6.3, 6 6.5 mil, 6.8. 6 6.5 to 7 mil, we're gonna call that slightly below average, half a, half a mil below average for a 25, 26.05 U type block. The N1 is thicker deck. We usually expect around eight, eight and a half mil. So we're gonna have a look at this GT500 and see what we've got. Eight point, sorry, 8.4, 8 8.08. 8 and we're gonna go through here. 8.86, I'm gonna say it's fairly consistent with an N1 block, which was our eight and a half. So uh, it's definitely not a thicker block deck and definitely not what we expected. I was, I was hoping for a sort of 9.5. So that's uh, decks done. Okay, we're gonna jump straight into bore thickness here, which is probably the most crucial part of determining whether a block is serviceable or not, especially for high horsepower applications. 
Some people might want to know about calibration and it does change on the density of the block somewhat. These two blocks I have started testing now are fairly similar in their hardness range. My calibration was out um, slightly from the standard 05U type block which I usually test. So I've just updated my calibration. I, I do have an RB bore here uh, and I have now compared it against my averages across the top of these decks. Okay, so on average our RB2526 block is between 3.5 and 4 mil on the back wall and the front wall of the block on the thrust side and the opposing side usually end up with about five or so to six millimeters. So as long as I don't get under my threshold of three millimeters, I'm happy for a block to get pushed. But for a high horsepower application, you're talking thousand horsepower, minimum I like to see three and a half mil. If you had four mil, you're, you're doing star jumps. You're, you're really happy with that sort of bore thickness. So four mil where it's usually a little bit thinner. 3.93, it's okay up the top there. I'm gonna check the opposing cylinder. Okay, four point, if you can see that, 4.10, 4.35 or so. I'm gonna go through, check the thrusts there. 4.3, five mil, gets bigger towards the top. 5.14, awesome. And now the opposing cylinder wall there from the thrust. I've got a nice six mil, 5.8, 5.7 towards the top. Pretty good. I'm gonna do a quick scan of the thinnest parts of the cylinders, which is usually between the bores on all these blocks. So usually we wanna to aim to have at least that three mil, 3.5 for a big horsepower build. Still got a fairly consistent three to four mil ball. We're gonna check the other side, 3.9. We're happy there. Gonna check a couple more quickly. Plenty of lube there. Four mil, 3.92. So far it's pretty good. 3.75, 3.6, which is about the thinnest so far on this block. Let's just test one more. 3.6 again, 3.66, 3.82. Not a great connection there. Okay, and four mil. Okay, so the average bore thickness of this block is really good. We didn't have anything under about 3.6 mil. I'd say that's extremely high. It's above average for a 25, 26 block. Stoke with this block. Okay, we're gonna roll straight into the GT500 bore testing with our little ultrasonic tester here. I'm expecting some really good bores, four and a half mil to seven and a half mil on average, if the rumors are true, that it's a mil thicker in the bore. So I'm just gonna run around about an inch and a half down from the top of the bore, because that's where they're all thin if they're gonna be thin. And I've already had a quick look at this block, so I've got a fair idea of what I need to show you. Cylinder one, 4.2, six and a half. So far, so good. 6.7, thrust side, five and a half mil. It's not fantastic on that bore, the rest of it was okay. Here, we've got already 3.5, and I'm not fishing around here for the absolute thinnest, it's not a fantastic bore. I'm expecting that to be at least a mil thicker there. But we're just gonna skim around to the other side, 7.2, 4.1, 6 These bores are just like every other Nissan RB engine all over the shop. Okay, four mil on that backside. 6.7, I'm expecting this side to be thicker because we had just under three and a half mil on the other side of the bore there and it is a little bit better. We're not worried about the thrust side and the opposing to thrust side of the bore because usually they're pretty good. 
It's between the cylinders that's the problem on most RBs. Cylinder four, let's have a look. 3.2, 3.19, here we go, 3.09. This is, this is not looking good here. That side's okay. 4.7, 4.8, 6.03. I'm just going real quick here because I don't want to take up all day. 3.2 on the back wall, 3.1. I'm just going to fish around here because it seems to be getting thinner and thinner the higher I go. Wow. Look at that, we've got a three mil ball and a bit of core shift. From there, I got 2.99 and I move the sonic tester around, not even five mil, and it jumps up a mil. Massive core shift right at the back of cylinder five. And I'm calling that not a great block. Now that I've found a 2.99, I'm hoping that the other side of that wall is gonna be thicker to compensate. Not that it's gonna help our 2.99, it's still a thin spot of the bore and this block will crack at that thin spot. Yeah, a bit better there. 4.8 odd. Just gonna come back to this side. Six and a half. That back wall on the last cylinder is always good. Six mil, so nothing to worry about there. And about five and a half mil. So all in all, we've got three or four thin cylinders under three and a half mil, 3.2, 3.1, three mil, 2.9 mil on the back fifth cylinder there. So I'm shocked and a little bit disappointed, kind of happy, but I've got mixed emotions now. I think Nissan's let me down again, sorry to say. Was there a mil thicker in some of these bores on average? No, I mean, if you took the average across the whole lot, I mean, maybe 0.2, maybe 0.5 until you get to those thinner sections of the bore, and then it's actually on par or worse. Now we're gonna lead straight into hardness testing. Now, for those who don't know why or how this works, it's basically a Brunel figure, is the figure that I extract with this expensive little machine. Um, the difference between a soft and a hard block is the harder it is, the harder it is to break it. There's a common misconception that a hard block is more brittle. It, it's just not how it works. What happens is because there's no yield strength of a, of a cast iron block or a cast iron anything, there's no elasticity. It doesn't want to come back to shape if you do twist it or bend it or balloon a bore. So the bore stay ballooned until it reaches a certain area where it's, it's pulling its ultimate strength, which could be on a, on a linear graph that looks like this. It's the ultimate strength of cast iron. This one, for example, could be here. As soon as it reaches that, it cracks. There's no other way for it to go. There's no stretching and coming back. There's, it, 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 it's, it doesn't have the malleability or the ductility. It's, 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 it's life is numbered, so to speak. So if we've got a harder block, that linear curve will just be further than the softer one. The harder one will be up here somewhere and then it'll crack. So ultimately it is what it is. The harder the block, the better it is but you've just got to remember that there is no yield strength with a cast iron. So we're going to go straight over this RB25, test that one. Now these things usually average around 240 to 250 odd, same as the RB2605 U block. This happens to be a 23U. Two fifty-seven, unicorn block. That's as hard as they get in an RB twenty-five or twenty-six block, and this thing is just a freak. I'm expecting this one to be at least the same, if not better, being the world's most expensive Nissan RB block. 
You can hear straight away that ball's just not bouncing. 245. That's on par with the average 25 or 26 block. The N1 24U is usually a little bit softer than that. They average between 230, 220 and 230. So this is better than the N1 as far as hardness is concerned, but it's on par with your average 25, 26 block. Unfortunately, there is no miracle unicornness happening here. Okay, we're starting to get towards the end of our testing with this GT500 block. I just wanted to give you a little bit more information this time after speaking to a friend of mine, Peter, PMC Race Engines, and a couple of guys that don't want to be named that are fairly big in motorsport engine building and tuning. The GT500 block was never anything special. I've got a couple of guys that have bought block after block, testing them to find a decent bore, and 2.8 millimetres is sort of average up to, you know, up to the seven mil core shift. But the situation is where they go from thin to thick, and it always seems to happen along here. It's thick here on the thrust side. It's thinner on the bottom of every ball, usually. So where it goes from thick to thin, because the thick wants to be out of balloon a little bit and the thin doesn't, there's a fault line. And usually between one and sort of three mil, I've noticed, four mil sometimes, it just cracks there on every cylinder. It could be five, it could be four, it could be three or whatever. It's inherently a bad situation when it comes to, unfortunately, all the GTR blocks. Core shift does kill them. This one in particular, I mean, we've got a three mil bore. It's not un unheard of, it's not unusual, but this engine was only ever designed for the GT Racing Cup Series 500 horsepower. Now, I was told by Pete while he was at OS in Japan that they were a couple of kilos lighter to meet a regulation in the, Japan, the Japanese GT500 racing series. So they are, on average, a couple of kilos lighter. Uh, we're just going to measure these. We're going to weigh these blocks in a second. But I have found that all this supporting webbing around the sides, on the front and the back, is roughly 0.8 to a mil, 1.2 mil thinner on the GT500 block than on the RB2526 blocks. So you can see where they did take a bit of material out of there to make them that extra couple of kilos lighter, but I'm just gonna show you now how much lighter they are. Bear in mind, this one is missing most of its main bolts. We're gonna call that 68 kilograms uh, to take into account a set of bolts. 65.9, so we do have a little bit of difference there in weight. I wouldn't call it major. I think that concludes our little GT500 debunking series. Sorry to disappoint guys, but I'm hurting on the inside as well. Well, there you have it. Looking at the numbers, the GT block has the extra thickness in the deck like the N1 does over the RB25, 26 and 30, but that's the only real advantage that can be measured. The hardness came in at mid-range for an RB25 or 26 at 245. And we couldn't find the extra bore thickness. With the sides being the same range as any other RB, and between the bores was okay on some, but some thin spots being quite detrimental to this GT block. It seems it suffers from quite large core shift, just like any RB does. Essentially, the bores move around in the casting, creating inconsistent bore thickness. This is why you must have any engine you plan on building checked and measured before building it, so you know whether to offset bore it or whether you need to find a better block to start with. Is there some special source in the material for the GT, like is rumoured for the N1? Maybe, but the workshops, engine builders and tuners we have spoken to with experience with GT and N1 blocks said they have broken them in the same places they break any other RB block. The 2JZ's proven track record shows that hardness does make the block stronger as it measures up at around 300. We've also been told there are improved water galleries in the N1 and GT block, but these would be for endurance racing and not really help it make any more power. At the end of the day, the GT500 block was designed for circuit racing at 500 horsepower. If there's more to it, well, we can't see it or measure it.